Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to a new edition of Dunner Beat TV. Today, we're going to talk about a lot of different stuff that's going on in the community. I ain't going to tell you why I'm at. All I can tell you, I'm in a different, uh, different place, but let me, let me do this right here. All right, y'all, man, we got a great show here. Yesterday, we had an opportunity to go and visit with the uh, Wigatonga Police Department. As you know, it didn't go, it went well. We got another thing we're going to show. Let's talk about President Trump. What he had to say on um, this week. Y'all check it out and we'll be right back. Good meeting. The family was there and they were excited. They let it be known that since she was seen here last because she won a tremendous amount of money. Um, that Wataga would have been the one um, th that re recently reached out. We are going to be doing, we are known, United My Justice, by the city of Fort Worth as being the peaceful mm -hmm. protesters. Okay. That we're going to be doing a protest there on Thursday. Okay. They do open up Thursday at 5 o'clock. We're not there to do violence or anything sure. like that. And we want the police department to, to know that that's okay. what we're there for. Okay. And uh, we're trying to do what, what we can to try to get people, because oh, usually found. citizens and witnesses, they usually talk more to us sure. than police officers. So we're just trying to kind of like aid you all sure. and try to help bridge the gap between the citizens and the police department. Well, when we found out of the missing person case, we did share that on our social media, the okay. bulletin that was put out by Fort Worth. We shared that hoping that someone around here would see something and let us know or let Fort Worth know. And up to this point, that's all we've been asked to do. Okay. So I did receive a call over the weekend. Uh, someone had reached out to our mayor and I cannot remember his name, but he left a voicemail. The mayor sent that to me. I called back to that person twice and left a message and have not gotten a response that he was working with a family. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you so much for that. United My Justice are the group. I am licensed uh, as an independent investigator, mm -hmm. also a leader and an activist. So um, the family has a contact person and we have the contact person. Okay. Because usually doing these cases, you have people that would come in and maybe want to get money and things like that. And so that's why we wanted to come and meet you and just let me know that we're here as an aide um, to let you all know. And for the, the, the uh, citizens to know that we are working together. We are trying to do what we can to bring your home safely. Absolutely. And we would want nothing more than that. Yes. Okay. A question, officer. Uh, I... Uh, I'm Robert Johnson. It's my pleasure to meet you, Officer uh, Parker. Uh, thank you for your time, first of all. Uh, what is the normal procedure? Because this particular case is 30 days in. Mm -hmm. And at this point, it's vital that we get as many people on the case. So I don't know how big the police department is or anything like that. So it's critical. You know, we have a family that, but on one end, an uh, officer didn't do his job. So the negligence has been there. So at this point, now we're playing catch up in regards to you guys, them notifying you and saying, hey, we need your help or we need you to do certain things. And then when you come and say, well, we've reached out to these people, but there's no response as of yet to talk with the family member to say, hey, there's no response yet. So it's kind of hard even on the family and even us as a group for uh, us to embrace the fact that, well, we haven't heard anything yet. So we're looking for the now and the now is like no other way. There's no other way that you can get the job done unless you see something, do something right now. So what is your step or the first move that you will make seeing the importance of the time frame that has happened? Yeah. Because this is a Fort Worth case, my first step is to wait for Fort Worth to reach out to us and ask us for help mm. or what we can help them with. And that's really where we stand at this point because it's not our case. We don't have the right to work it because it is a Fort Worth case. Okay, so then, and, and I can understand that I heard you say that. So once Fort Worth asks you, hey, we need your help on this particular case, what's the first thing you guys do? Because like I said, this case is a missing person 30 days. 
you know, for, normally it's like the first 48 hours, you know. Right. Well, it will uh, be dependent upon what Fort Worth asks us to do. And what they ask us to do, we will try to accommodate. We'll, and, we'll put everything we can to accommodate their request. Okay. And I want to say this, Robert, I know that you was not in the meeting. Fort Worth, you know, is taking on the case, you know, because it's Tarrant County all together. And so they're, they're admitted that this is serious now. So they can only aid and assist with Fort Worth. The chief did say that he will be reaching out to the Fort Worth Police Department and they're getting on it. And so uh, they can't overstep Fort, Fort Worth. Worth. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so understood. However, you know, I was just, like I said, I'm talking to you like it was my family member that Absolutely. was missing. So if someone sees this video or if I go back and talk with the family, I want to be able to say exactly what what I've heard that's the now. Now the person that reached out to me was stated they were representing or working with the family. Yeah. And I can was, that that was it a male or female? Uh, it was a male. Let me see if I've got that information handy. No, was that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. No, it was not the uh, Reverend Beat them out, son. I'm, yeah, I'm curious to know that. Me that's too. Very I'm important. curious. They say when they were notified, uh, uh, asked questions pertaining to Carolyn, where did the Beamer Hall say? I don't think they gave us any information. I they didn't give us any information. They showed Beamer Actually, they actually the right now, the Fort Worth Police Department has an investigator right now that's getting ready to work. You no know, problem. Okay, so like Beamer Hall. Oh, so they're going to they, start today? They, they, okay. Did yeah. they say that they didn't care or they actually. I wonder what's that opposite of Jones? Oh, uh, right now they're not Tyler being Johnson. Tyler Johnston. Okay. okay. I never heard of we that. We don't reached out to, to our mayor. Okay. We don't, oh, okay. We, don't, we personally don't know what Tyler Jones, okay. that's I why we're heard. establishing a relationship now with you all. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, if the mayor, I don't know, I haven't been over there yet, uh, is available just for me to talk with the mayor. I would like to meet the mayor just so they will like know we are the organization. The family does have their own group. It's the sisters and the mother. And so we just want to, um, it's suspicious. We just want to be mindful that she is still missing mm -hmm. and we realize there are going to be people and there's going to be hosts and phone calls. And so I'm glad that you still got that information, but we are not familiar with okay. anybody by that. No, name. That's, that's fine. Um, you're welcome to go over to city hall and see if the mayor's in his office and, and try to visit with him. He's most likely going to refer you back to me, which is fine too. Um, when Fort Worth reaches out to us, we will do everything we can to accommodate their requests. Okay. Um, I do understand that uh, at least the vehicle was uh, located uh, or seen in Denton by some sort of a, a video system, according to the, the news report that I right. heard, right. Um, which indicated to me that the vehicle was going north. I don't know who was in it. Um, the, the, re the news report indicated that she and the vehicle were observed in that area. Hmm. So, um, probably would start working towards that way. And if she's a bingo player, yes. um, I don't know if she would uh, maybe go to Oklahoma to a casino. That's what they was, that's what yeah, I was we did. I reached out to the chief there at Thackerville, uh -huh. um, chief of police. And so, cause I was told by the officer in the Fort Worth that they had reached out, but they had not heard. So today the chief Ramirez, he's going to make sure that officers are now on it. He's assigned mm -hmm. Officer Martinez mm -hmm. uh, to the case. And so they're going to start the, doing the work today. Yeah, he showed his And clean up yeah. a transparent. We just wanted to get the uh, get it straight because we don't want to go on hearsay to show that you all do care. This is not an Absolutely. issue. It has nothing to do with being black. No, no. That you all are transparent. You all are taking this seriously. Who's, who's possibly yeah. in danger. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's possible, Jason. We, th we thank you for coming out, sure. you know, and hopefully and the same with the mayor. We don't want anybody getting that mixed message out. And that's why we wanted to make it clear that everybody is working together mm -hmm. as a team yes, to right. have her uh, come home safely. Absolutely. And, uh, Officer Parker, uh, um, one of the questions that I would have, I mean, because I think that we've talked with different chiefs and officers as well, but with each one, everybody's got a little bit more knowledge of each city or each area. Is there anything that we as a group could actually do in your area that would help you since we're united to try to come together to help in any form or fashion to help the family find their love? Well, I don't know of anything at this time, but if you'll leave your contact information, if something comes up where we determine that 
hey, Fort Worth has asked us to do this and we need some more people out there, I'll be happy to call you and, and invite you out to help us. Okay, okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Mm -hmm. if, if you would just leave that information with us, we'd be happy to do that. If for some reason there's an area that we need to search for, for potential evidence or something like that, then we would be happy to invite the people to come help us. Okay. Yeah, I didn't yeah, bring my card, but Chief, um, I, I was hoping that um, you had a card on you. Um, I, can, I, can I think that I have some in the car. I always like to identify myself sure. because people will try to, you know, um, you know, just play these little games. And we don't have to sure, I understand that. <laughs> yes. And this is not a time to play games. It's, no, it's uh, not. It's, it's not. time to, to group up and do what we can to find this lady. Okay. I'd like to get one of your cards as well. Okay, yeah, he's gonna grab some. We need to get some made for us too. Yeah. Okay. But uh, once again, we want to thank you for yes. your support. Yes. And, and we pray to the Lord that He guides and directs each and every one of your paths in regards to it. So definitely, uh, okay. if there's something that we can yeah. do, please. Okay. We're trying to help the family, you know. Sure. So if it were your mother or your father i mean you'd want everybody on the job as well yes, so uh, i think it it doesn't hit you hard until it's at home mm -hmm. and i think that for me my passion is because i respect each and every individual the way i want to be respected and by putting god first i allow myself to feel the same way for anybody else have that type of compassion so the family is hurting. To lose a mother, let's face it, anybody here, that's mom. You, nobody wants to lose mom. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's critical, it, it, it's of the essence, and every little bit helps. So yes, sir. definitely, if we can do something, please let us know. Sure. Did you leave your information with the... I'm going to most definitely leave my information. And hopefully, all we're trying to do with the mayor is just to make sure that there is transparent. And, you know, City of Fort Worth... I hope y'all enjoying the show. Shout out to everybody out there tuning in to us. And we'll have a lot more coming up tomorrow right here. Thank you. But if Democrat leaders put partisan demands aside, we would reach an agreement very quickly. We happen... It would happen very quickly. In the meantime, my administration is exploring executive actions to provide protections against eviction. Eviction is a big problem. It's very unfair to a lot of people. It wasn't their fault that this virus came from a faraway land. As well as additional relief to those who are unemployed as a result of the virus. Very importantly, I'm also looking at a term-limited suspension of the payroll tax something that is great support from many, many sides, especially some of our top uh, economists and some people that we have great respect for. So we're looking at a suspension of the payroll tax. The Democrats are primarily interested in a $1 trillion bailout of the poorly run states. We have some states and cities, you know them all. We don't have to go through names, but they've been very poorly run over the years. And we can't go along with the bailout money. We're not going to go along with that, especially since it's not COVID-related. Earlier today, I met with a great governor, Arizona governor, Doug Ducey. He's really done a fantastic job beyond even the COVID situation, which you've been reading about as it pertains to Arizona. A state that is a model for applying a science-based approach to the decreasing cases and hospitalizations without implementing a punishing lockdown. Arizona's record in reducing the spread of the virus while maintaining hospital capacity and allowing society to continue functioning and functioning very nicely, very successfully is an example that shows how our path forward can work in other states. Arizona has a record, and uh, a record really to be proud of. It's reduced the number of daily new cases by over 75 percent, cut the positivity rate in half, and reduced ER visits by two-thirds, all the while keeping the economy functioning and functioning really well. 
When cases surged in June, the Vice President and Dr. Burke visited Arizona to consult with Governor Ducey. They had long consultations with Governor Ducey and his staff, and the Vice President has been in constant contact ever since. My administration is also collaborating with the state and local officials across the South and Midwest to provide similar guidance. We had a great uh, relationship with the representatives in Arizona, and it's been such a successful uh, endeavor. The federal government has supplied or delivered more than 400 million pieces of personal protective equipment to Arizona, along with nearly 70,000 vials of rem remdesivir. We've provided over one, uh, excuse me, we provided over $18 billion in economic, but if Democrat leaders put partisan demands aside, we would reach an agreement very quickly. We happen, it would happen very quickly. In the meantime, my administration's exploring executive actions to provide protections against eviction. Eviction's a big problem, very unfair to a lot of people. It wasn't their fault that this virus came from a faraway land, as well as additional relief to those who are unemployed as a result of the virus. Very importantly, I'm also looking at a term-limited suspension of the payroll tax, something that is great support from many, many sides, especially some of our top uh, economists and some people that we have great respect for. So we're looking at a suspension of the payroll tax. The Democrats are primarily interested in a $1 trillion bailout of the poorly run states. We have some states and cities, you know them all. We don't have to go through names, but they've been very poorly run over the years. And we can't go along with the bailout money. We're not going to go along with that, especially since it's not COVID related. Earlier today, I met with a great governor, Arizona governor, Doug Ducey has really done a fantastic job beyond even the COVID situation, which you've been reading about as it pertains to Arizona. A state that is a model for applying a science-based approach to the decreasing cases and hospitalizations without implementing a punishing lockdown. Arizona's record in reducing the spread of the virus while maintaining hospital capacity and allowing society to continue functioning and functioning very nicely, very successfully, is an example that shows how our path forward can work in other states. Arizona has a record, and uh, a record really to be proud of. It's reduced the number of daily new cases by over 75 percent, cut the positivity rate in half, and reduced ER visits by two-thirds, all the while keeping the economy functioning and functioning really well. When cases surged in June, the Vice President and Dr. Burke visited Arizona to consult with Governor Ducey. They had long consultations with Governor Ducey and his staff, and the Vice President has been in constant contact ever since. My administration is also collaborating with the state and local officials across the South and Midwest to provide similar guidance. We had a great uh, relationship with the representatives in Arizona, and it's been such a successful uh, endeavor. The federal government has supplied or delivered more than 400 million pieces of personal protective equipment to Arizona, along with nearly 70,000 vials of rem remdesivir. We've provided over one, uh, excuse me, we provided over $18 billion. Uh, police recall, talking about different stuff that's been happening in the community and talking about that. So yesterday, not only did we go to the Tiger Police Department, but we also went to the Fort Worth Police Department. Now, I ain't gonna lie, we don't have any footage from there, but that meeting went straight. Uh, the lady that's missing, she's been missing for 30, 30 days as of today. So, we're going to continue to follow up on this story. And we're going to go back to some more clips. But at the same time, they still have to do their job. Yes, yes, yes. And so, and Dor each job has a description. Mm -hmm. Every job that 
has ever been made up or whatever the case might be, they give you an outline as to that job. Mm -hmm. If you go to the outline of the the chief of police job, it's going to tell you in detail what he's supposed to be giving you for him holding that position. Mm -hmm. And if in fact that he's not doing that, why is he in that position? Yeah, you're right. Because believe me, each and every one of us mm -hmm. on our job we're held accountable for getting the job done. We're held accountable for every line that's on that job description. If in fact that these people, these officers, these people in appointed positions are not doing exactly what that job says, there is a major problem. Hmm, because yeah. not only does it affect him, but it affects everybody in and that, that department. Yeah, right. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And so we are hoping. What, do, what are we hoping, Darnell? We're hoping to get this family justice. Uh, hope, we're hoping for a safe return. We're hoping that this woman, uh, come, that we found this woman alive before it's too late. That's and, what we're hoping for. And so you are organizing a protest at the bingo hall. Yes, we're going we're gonna to organize that for this coming up Thursday. I'm going to send out a pr press release to all the media to let them know where we're going to be at and all that. Just coming up Thursday at 5 o'clock. Okay. Nikki says way. she had an emergency, so she had to go home. Okay. You know, okay. But um, so you're asking people to come out. Yeah, come on out and help um, support this family. Do you know family. the name of the bingo hall? That I don't know. That I don't know. Okay. 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 What is it called? Taco Road. Okay. Taco Road. Thursday is the Pacific time. Yeah, we want to be there. at five o'clock. We want to be there about four forty-five. Okay. To start the protest, bring signs up. Yeah. Around there because we the family wants Carolyn Riggins home safely, and it takes leaders, it takes protesters, it takes the city, the police department, everybody working together and not be divided, mm -hmm. coming together and standing when you see uh, injustice. We cannot be against each other. That's right. We got to stand together, unified together in order for us to get things done. Mm -hmm. So we will be having a protest in front of the Bingo Hall. We're going to shut it down. How in the world are they wanting also to Also, we're going to shut down the, uh, the gas station, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. How in the world will a Bingo Hall who's non-profit organization, they are a non-profit, most Bingo Halls are non-profit. I did They're not know that. They're a 501c wow. organization. And so, how in the world I didn't even know that. do you have a non-profit organization that consists of board members and you have a citizen, a person who's a customer, comes in there who is not a stranger to plan Bingo and she comes up missing after she won a large amount of money. And the bingo um, manager who runs the bingo hall has an attitude that they don't care. And this is where we come in at. This is That's not right. about starting riot or this is not about uh, being violent. This is about standing up together for justice. That's and this right. is why we're here. We came here to the retired police department because it's important not only to me united justice it's not just important to the citizens and the leaders that are here with us today but it's important to you all to know how the chief feels how the lieutenant how these officers are feeling about the ideal thing that carolyn riggins was missing in their city it is important i want to pay a visit to the city mayor the mayor of, of this city to find out how does the mayor feel? Mm -hmm. Every lives matter. That's right. We get it. Black lives matter. When it comes to things like this, we just don't seem to get the equal justice that's needed. And we're saying enough is enough. Yes. Uh -oh. Okay. So they they give me a Transparent on things. Hold this. And then you don't know Hi, how are you? I'm great. I'm Chief Parker. Who can Chief I help? Chief Parker, I'm so glad that you came out. We're with United for Justice. I'm Carol Harrison Lafayette. Okay. And um, it's important that the citizens know we have been sitting down at the table with the city manager. We're the group that led the peaceful protest out of the city of Fort Worth. Okay. So out of that, we've been sitting with the mayor, Mr. Price, right along with the chief of police, Chief Cross. And we've been having meetings trying to bridge the gap between the citizens. The concern is that Carolyn Riggins, mm -hmm. of the police report, she is missing. Yes, she was here at the city. She loved to play bingo here. 
And so we don't want to get a missed message out. We want the public to know, and we want to know that you guys are going to be working. We just left the meeting with the chief, with the city of Fort Worth Police Department, and my understanding they're going to be reaching back out to y'all. Okay. But we want to make sure that you all are still, you all are transparent, yes, and that you're willing to also do whatever y'all can to make sure that Carolyn is found safe or y'all's job and not put it out there negatively, you don't care. No, 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 we, we do care. Now, as you said, this is a Fort Worth case. This is not a Watauga case. Yes. Even though she had been seen in Watauga. Um, if Fort Worth is going to reach out to us, that's great. We will provide any assistance that, that they ask for that we're able to provide. Um, you know, we're, we're happy to do whatever we can. We just need them to ask us. Okay. And they will be doing that. We had a very good meeting. The family was there mm -hmm. and they were excited. They let it be known that since she was seen here last because mm -hmm. she won a tremendous amount of money, um, that Wataga would have been the one uh, th that re recently reached out. We are going to be doing, we are known, United My Justice, by the city of Fort Worth as being the peaceful mm -hmm. protesters. Okay. That we're going to be doing a protest there on Thursday. Okay. They do open up Thursday at 5 o'clock. We're not there to do violence or anything sure. like that. And we want the police department to, to know that that's okay. what we're there for. Okay. And uh, we're trying to do what, what we can to try to get people. Because oh, usually found. citizens and witnesses, they usually talk more to us sure. than police officers. So we're just trying to kind of like aid you all sure. and try to help bridge the gap between the citizens in the police department. Well, when we found out of the missing person case, we did share that on our social media, the okay. bulletin that was put out by Fort Worth. We shared that hoping that someone around here would see something and let us know or let Fort Worth know. And up to this point, that's all we've been asked to do. Okay. So I did receive a call over the weekend. Uh, someone had reached out to our mayor and I cannot remember his name, but he left a voicemail. The mayor sent that to me. I called back to that person twice and left a message and have not gotten a response that he was working with a family. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you so much for that. United My Justice are the group. I am licensed uh, as an independent investigator, mm -hmm. also a leader and an activist. So um, the family has a contact person and we have the contact person. Okay. Because usually doing these cases, you have people that would come in and maybe want to get money and things like that. And so that's why we wanted to come and meet you and just let me know that we're here as an aid um, to let you all know. And for the, the, the uh, citizens to know that we are working together. We are trying to do what we can to bring your home safely. Absolutely. And we would want nothing more than that. Yes. Okay. A question, officer. Uh, I... Uh, I'm Robert Johnson. It's my pleasure to meet you, Officer uh, Parker. Uh, thank you for your time, first of all. Uh, what is the normal procedure? Because this particular case is 30 days in. Mm -hmm. And at this point, it's vital that we get as many people on the case. So I don't know how big the police department is or anything like that. So it's critical. You know, we have a family that, but. On one end, an uh, officer didn't do his job. So the negligence has been there. So at this point, now we're playing catch up in regards to you guys, them notifying you and saying, hey, we need your help or we need you to do certain things. And then when you come and say, well, we've reached out to these people, but there's no response as of yet to talk with the family member to say, hey, there's no response yet. So it's kind of hard even on the family and even us as a group for uh, us to embrace the fact that, well, we haven't heard anything yet. So we're looking for the now and the now is like no other way. There's no other way that you can get the job done unless you see something, do something right now. So what is your step or the first move that you will make seeing the importance of the time frame that has happened? So because this is a Fort Worth case, my first step is to wait for Fort Worth to reach out to us and ask us for help mm -hmm. or what we can help them with. And that's really where we stand at this point because it's not our case. We don't have the right to work it, 
because it is a Fort Worth case. Okay, so then, and, and I can understand that I heard you say that. So once Fort Worth asks you, hey, we need your help on this particular case, what's the first thing you guys do? Because like I said, this case is a missing person 30 days. You know, we're, for, normally it's like the first 48 hours, you know. Right. Well, it will uh, be dependent upon what Fort Worth asks us to do. And what they ask us to do, we will try to accommodate. We'll, and, we'll put everything we can to accommodate their request. Okay. And I want to say this, Robert, I know that you was not in the meeting. Fort Worth, you know, is taking on the case, you know, because it's Tarrant County all together. And so they're, they're admitted that this is serious now. So they can only aid and assist with Fort Worth. The chief did say that he will be reaching out to the Fort Worth Police Department and they're getting on it. And so uh, they can't overstep Fort, Fort Worth. Worth. Yeah. You know, it's so understood. However, you know, I was just, like I said, I'm talking to you like it was.